Here I've got a really cool linear algebra problem from the IMC. The year was 1997. So we want to suppose that A and B are two n by n matrices with real coefficients. It's really important to notice here that these have real coefficients. And they satisfy the following equation. So A squared plus B squared is equal to A times B. And our goal is to show that if the commutator of B and A, in other words, BA minus AB is invertible, then that dimension is actually a multiple of three. In other words, three divides N. Now, maybe I'll give you guys a couple of hints to get started, and let's get those on the board. Okay, so here are a couple of hints. So the first is to be inspired by the fact that these are real matrices and jump into the world of complex matrices. And then the next hint is built off of this one, and that is the determinant of the complex conjugate of a matrix is the complex conjugate of the determinant of that matrix. So there's some nice commutativity relation between taking the determinant and taking the complex conjugate. So now let's dive into the solution. So I wanna consider the following third matrix. So I'll call that matrix C, and that will be a combination of A and B. So it'll be A plus eta times B, where eta is a primitive third root of one. In other words, it's a primitive third root of unity. Now there are two primitive third roots of unity and you can take either of them you want. Generally, you might take e to the i two pi over three but it's pretty standard just to say that you're taking a primitive third root of unity. And now the major trick here is to look at the determinant of this matrix C times its conjugate two different ways. So let's start like this. The determinant of C times its conjugate, that's gonna be equal to the determinant of C times the determinant of C conjugate. Well, that's because the determinant is a multiplicative function. Then next, we can say that that is the determinant of C times the determinant of C conjugate. And that's by this little hint down here. I'll let you guys look up a proof for that. It has to do with the fact that the determinant is like a polynomial function in the entries of a matrix. And taking the determinant of a polynomial is like taking the determinant of the entries of that polynomial. Okay, but now we've got a number times its complex conjugate, but it's well known that a number times its complex conjugate is a real number. So again, we've got this determinant of C times C conjugate is a real number. Now let's calculate C times C conjugate and see what it looks like. So that's going to be a plus eta times b times a plus eta squared times b. And why is that? Well, it's because a and b have real entries and the complex conjugate of eta is eta squared. And you can see that because taking the complex conjugate here really just puts a minus sign, but then some obvious rules involving the trig functions will make that minus sign into something squared. Okay, so now we can multiply this out. This will give us a squared plus b squared. So that's a times a, b times b, eta times eta squared is eta cubed, but since it's a primitive third root of unity, that's just the number one. And then we'll have this is plus eta times ba, and then plus eta squared times ab, where I've put a little bit of a gap in there. Here I will subtract eta times ab. Why do I wanna do that? Because I'm trying to get this object ba minus ab into the situation. But that means over here, I need to add eta times ab. Now I'll apply my assumption, which is that a squared plus b squared equals ab, to replace this with ab. But now let's notice I've got ab, I've got 
eta AB and I've got eta squared AB. So I can rewrite that as one plus eta plus eta squared times AB. So again, that's from this term right here, this term right here, and this term right here. And then let's see what we have left over. We have eta times BA minus AB. In other words, we have eta times that commutator. Because eta is again a third root of unity, that means it's a root of this polynomial, which means this thing cancels down to zero. But that leaves us with this is equal to eta times, like I said, the commutator of B with A, which I'll just denote like this. Now I'm gonna take this determinant another way. So let's take the determinant of C times C bar, and notice that that's gonna be equal to the determinant of eta times this commutator of B with A, where that eta is like a constant multiple of this. But now there's a rule that says when you take the determinant of the scalar multiple of a matrix, you can't take that scalar multiple out, but what you can do is take that scalar multiple to the dimension out. So that means here we have this is equal to eta to the n, because that's the dimension of this matrix, times the determinant of B A. But now our assumption is that the determinant of B comma A is not zero because this is invertible. So we know that this thing is not zero. Okay, so now let's put these two things together. On the one hand, we see that the determinant of C, C bar is a real number, but on the other hand, we see that the determinant of C, C bar is non-zero. Keeping in mind that this determinant is a non-zero real number, that means that this bit that's left over must be a real number. So that means we can finish our entire argument in this little box. So like I said, putting those two things together, we have eta to the n is a real number, but that only occurs when n is a multiple of three. And that's because eta is a primitive third root of unity. So that's just a standard rule about primitive roots of unity. And so that's exactly where we wanted to end, and that's a good place to stop.